to the new market uh, zoning board of adjustment a uh, couple of housekeeping things we're virtual so anyone um, wishing to attend the meeting in person at the town hall is welcome to attend we're maintaining social distancing you have to have a mask on if you want to attend by telephone the board will be using zoom using the following information to join the meeting call the number this number one six four six five five eight eight six five six the meeting ID code is nine two two seven four five seven nine four two one and if you have any problems with that call six oh three six five nine three six one seven extension thirteen twenty one uh, all of this information is on the uh, the uh, legal notice for the meeting so uh, you can call that up and take a look at it with that let's start the the meeting with the pledge of allegiance I pledge allegiance to the flag of the united states of america and to the republic for which it stands one nation under god indivisible and justice for all okay Um, the agenda shows that we're going to review and approve minutes, but we don't have anything published yet, so we will, uh, and I haven't had a chance to review, um, so I'll entertain a motion to, to table that for this meeting and we'll address it at the next meeting. So we have the minutes from the 28th, I believe. I didn't They were see on the agenda that's online. Oh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see them. Did you? Uh, they're there. If okay. you go to the online agenda, you yeah, can that, pull that, them up on the screen if you fine. so desire. Motion to postpone to the next meeting. So okay. Second. Who made that motion and who seconded it, please? Al made the motion, Wayne seconded it. All those in favor, we have to do a roll call. So, Al? Aye. Wayne? Aye. James? Aye. Steve? Aye. And it's an aye from me, so it's we have motion. We'll take it up in the next meeting. Okay, with that, uh, we're going to go over to the uh, regular business. This is the um, request for uh, relief from James, uh, Jeffrey, and Rachel Eames of the Eames Family Revocable Trust of 2020. It's a continuation of a public hearing for an application for variance, reference sections 32-86, residential density, 32-47, M3 zone, and 32-56, table of permitted uses of the new market zoning ordinance. Requested by Jeffrey and Rachel Eames, Eames Family Revocable Trust of 2020, to permit the conversion of a portion of the current first floor 1,210 square foot commercial office space to a 1,100 square foot residential apartment. The property is located at 95 South Main Street, tax map U4, lot 27, zone, the M3 zone. And with that, I turn it over to uh, Rachel. Can you hear us okay? I can hear you and thank you. So good evening, everyone. Glad the audio is working. <laughs> so um, succinctly put, what you just read is what we're requesting. Uh, we're looking to uh, divide the space I would use that is existing on the first floor. We're not adding anything. We're not taking anything away per se. Uh, we're literally um, dividing off a small office space, and I believe I gave those square footages um, approximately uh, on this plan, which I think this time you should have in your packet. And thank you, Diane. I appreciate that. Um, so it's currently 1,210 square feet. We wouldn't be changing any of that space. We wouldn't be changing the layout of that space. We're proposing an office space of 110 approximate square feet and a, a residential apartment for the 1100. And if you look at that drawing um, on the far left, 
you will see where it says current entry and that wall uh, that says current wall right beyond it is existing. We would basically be making an L-shaped wall to wall off some office space and a door into that space, a door into the remainder of the space that would remain unchanged that would be an apartment. Okay. Now you've read the, the, uh, uh, the five different conditions for granting a variance. Can you address any of those with us? Um, the five criterion, yes. I believe we, we did go through, um, certainly can, can address them. They were, they were in the application. If you want to elaborate on any of them, we've um, written text, so. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. If you want to elaborate on any of them, that now would be the time. Okay, and, and I, and I will do that. So, um, basically the building is, uh, you know, extremely well kept. We have renovated that building, uh, kind of took took it over, so to speak, from John and Lynn uh, Sweet Perkins. Um, they had done a very, very nice job inside. Um, I kind of completed those interior renovations by putting in hardwood floor and, and kind of sprucing things up a little bit. And then we did a very nice job, I think, of keeping the character of the building um, by reciting it. It was uh, it was needy, I think it's a nice way to put it. It was kind of an eyesore in the neighborhood. And uh, we did the reciting and, and even kept the, uh, the motif, so to speak, the very pretty uh, decorations of the age of the property. And Mike Grassi did all that work for us and, and uh, it is just very nicely kept. The ramp is in great condition. We keep the lawn in excellent condition. It's a nice property. Um, parking lot is paved. Um, it has I think is how I'd put it. And so if I look at the neighboring buildings, um, I'm gonna say our building is in as good shape, if not slightly better than some of them, because of course we've just done all this work in the last couple of years, so it's in great condition. We are surrounded uh, literally um, by houses in the M3 zone that um, have multiple apartments in them. I do have some addresses that I can share that do not meet the requirements either of the zoning ordinance. Um, as we all know, um, housing in the state of New Hampshire, and especially the seacoast area of New Hampshire, is uh, wildly needed. Um, and this apartment is extremely nice. Uh, it's not going to be an, uh, an apartment that, uh, you know, it's not going to be housing for students, I guess is how I'm going to look at it. I am an insurance agent, and there are certain things that are allowed by our insurance and certain things that aren't. So. Um, it will be uh, well presented, well taken care of. Um, plus, we'll still be on site, which I think that's important to note, um, that we will still be on site. And it's important for us owning a business that we want the building uh, not only to appear uh, well kept, um, but well, well groomed and, and pride of ownership. So um, if I look at some of my immediate neighbors, um, I will mention 193 South Main Street. Uh, that is directly next to us, uh, heading towards downtown, if that makes any sense. Um, that is a six unit building. They are on 0.48 of an acre, so double the amount of land with six units in it. Um, they have 12 parking spaces, so two per unit, if you'd like to look at it that way, but they have no handicapped units. And we do have a handicapped unit um, to make sure that we could accommodate somebody with a disability, and we have a nice ramp uh, for people to be able to get into the first floor. I take a lot of pride in that. Um, so if I was to break that 0.48 of an acre down per six uh, units, uh, basically per unit is 0.08 of an acre um, and two spaces each. Uh, another one that is noteworthy, again, right there next to us, 198 South Main Street, M3. Um, they were on 0.19 of an acre. They actually have less land than we do. Um, and they have three apartments in that building. Um, so again, if I was to break down units per the amount of acreage, it's 0.06 acre uh, per unit. And just to mention a third, um, 200 South Main Street is in the M3 zone. Um, that's 0.18 of an acre. And that's a two family, two units. Um, and so that'd be 0.09 of an acre. 
I'm surrounded by um, buildings um, that have multiple apartments in them that don't meet uh, the zoning requirement. Um, and in actuality, we would, um, compared to the others, actually have more land and better parking, if you want to put it that way, um, than the ones that are currently surrounding me. Um, and, you know, I think important to realize that granting this variance wouldn't alter the character of um, my neighborhood at all. If anything, we've done, I think, an excellent job in putting that building back to a um, very nice looking building. Um, we, we took pride in doing that, so I, I don't think it alters the public health or safety of the residents of Newmarket. Um, and, you know, for, for those reasons, Granting it would, would be um, of no hardship, I guess is how I'd look at it. Um, I don't know what else you might like me to address, but I'm happy to address anything else that you might have specific questions regarding. Well, I, I, I guess I'd like to hear a little bit more on uh, what the hardship criteria uh, for making this necessary, what's specific about the property or the location that makes the, the hardship um, for the parcel to be... I can't well, the just... hardship is one that's not just going to hit the town of Newmarket, it's going to hit the entire uh, state, so to speak. And that is, is that commercial brick and mortar, um, you know, is, is going to be a, a difficult situation with the current environment. As we all know, COVID has hit and people are working from home. We are attending meetings from home uh, and it's not just um, the applicants, but tonight we actually have two board members attending from home, which I think is great. Uh, but the reality is, is that brick and mortar um, for commercial use is um, going to be very difficult to keep filled and occupied. And with uh, employees working from home and taxes going up, um, trying to keep a building that is uh, well-maintained and, and well-furbished, so to speak, um, is going to be more difficult for owners everywhere. And uh, I am a realtor, I am an insurance agent. I've been doing my uh, two disciplines for over 30 years. Uh, the writing is on the wall for small commercial uh, buildings. Um, quite frankly, it's on the wall for the large ones as well. It's just gonna take a little longer for it to hit. And um, we think it's prudent to be able to uh, offer an apartment uh, in the town like many others around me um, that would allow people to have a nice place would be still a very well-maintained building because our name would still be on it. Obviously, if our place of business is there, it's important to us how the building is maintained and how the building is uh, regarded. And uh, that keeps the building uh, looking nice, keeps the taxes paid, and things moving forward. Um, and, and that hardship is not just in the town of Newmarket. It's in every town in the state right now. I, I fully appreciate what you're saying. The uh, and what I'm hearing is that it's economically it's not viable to maintain that large a footprint for a job that can be done in a much smaller space, and you want to con uh, uh, convert that into something more uh, uh, rental worthy, more economical for the for the whole whole business. Is that correct? I would say that's partially correct. Other than um, I know there's not enough housing in the Seacoast area. There's, I mean, just pick up any any news journal, any online blog, anything you want. Um, and so it's, it behooves the town not to have good housing for for the residents. Then, you know, well maintained, well put together, something that is nice looking. Um, so yes, I mean that is correct. Other than it also uh, fills a need, a void. There is a need for, you know. There, you can live in an apartment and ask yourself, you know, do you want to live in an apartment building that has 24 units in it? Or would you prefer to live in a nice house like that, that has a yard and you're, you're, you're not inundated with people on all sides and top and bottom of you? Um, that's a much better fit for most, most people. And, and the reality is that um, actually Harvard University did a study that, you know, um, multifamilies, uh, typically are occupied by either single people, people who no longer have children, in other words, empty nesters, or people who aren't going to have children. So, uh, especially in a building like that, because 
it's not a low low rent area, that's for sure. Um, and in actuality, multi-unit uh, buildings uh, attract a different clientele than you might find um, otherwise. So, something else to consider. Yes. Um, I know I'm going to open it up to the public real quick, see if there's anybody, is there anybody out there in TV land that wants to comment on this application? And now is your time. Um, I'm, I'm not seeing anybody up on the screen. So, with that, I'll adjourn the, the, uh, the public comment portion of this discussion amongst the board. Uh, now's your time to ask questions of, of Rachel. And not let me do all the talking. I, I guess my question is more of a question that, for, for Diane. Um, I can't remember in my reading in preparing to, to review this, but I believe I had read something. Get closer to I believe I had read something that a number of years ago this house was converted from a single family home to a business and family home. Yes, it was. Um, actually, it was in 2015. It was originally a single family home, right. and this was before the Perkins purchased the property. Right. And um, they purchased it with the intent of putting the um, insurance office on the bottom floor. Right. And they did come forward and they went to the planning board um, because mixed use development is allowed in that um, zone, but it is subject to um, site plan review. And prior to this point, there were really no amenities on the site per se for commercial business. And they a professional engineer who worked with the um, homeowner or the property owner. And they did an excellent job, quite frankly, in put, laying out the parking lot and providing the handicap access. Also, there's some, a handicap space. And they actually put in a drainage system, a stormwater system, a rain garden that's in the back of the property. And it, I would say it's a really good example of infill development and how it can be done with limited space, but still meet the town's requirements and for stormwater management. Yeah, so yes, they did come to the planning board and they did get approval, but in doing so, because the um, property hasn't been used strictly for residential for a period of two years, they've lost the original vesting. So that's really why Rachel is here before us tonight is to go back and say, hey, I want to put the lower floor, part of the lower floor, back into residential. I, what, and I'm, I'm, again, I, I don't have my reference, but as I recall, there was some requirement after the building was turned into residential and business, within a certain period of time, to change that. It's, it's in the town zoning ordinance now. It says two years. So if you abate after two years, you mm -hmm. lose that vesting. So that's right guess, in the town zoning ordinance. So and we changed it to accommodate a situation like this. So I guess my question, because I'm brand new with this, is is there any implication uh, regarding the change in use uh, subsequent to that two year period? Actually, I think this is a perfectly viable use. And as part of my review of this before I prepared my letter, which I think you all have a copy of, um, I did go back and I revisited the planning board approval. And the, the proposed mixed use development, as Rachel has proposed it, meets the current town regulations for stormwater, for parking, and um, access, handicap access. So basically, they're not required to go back for further review by the planning board since they did such a good job with the first iteration of the plan. Okay. So I just wanted to point that out. And, and really, I, I think it's a good example of how you can do an infill without having negative impacts on your neighbors. Thank, Thank you, Diane. Yeah. I was thrilled with the project when it <laughs> came out. I mean, it was 
everything went very, and we did get buy off um, from the state um, Department of Transportation. They weighed in because they had to get a driveway permit approved by the state, and they did make some modifications to the plan so they had a one way circuit that would provide um, utmost safety. We had the highway engineer from the state down. And um, I think at the end of the day, it was a win-win for all. Thanks. Yeah. Anybody else? Steve, James, well. Diane, what, um, why does the applicant need a variance from the table of permitted uses? Mixed use is allowed in the M3 zone, right? Right, but they have two units. They're not allowed to have two units. And there's two reasons for that, Steve. Okay, if you look at the table of permitted use, that you can only have a single family in that zone. Um, and the other part of it has to do with the second reason why they need a variance. And that is currently the lot does not meet the residential density requirement. And um, I don't have all the information in front of me about in my letter, I think I've identified what the acreage is. So in addition to having a use variance, because they're having two units in a mixed use, okay, they also need to have a density unit um, variance to be able to meet the letter of the law with respect to those requirements. Well, to, to be perfectly clear, what's going to happen is if we do this, they're going to have three units there, correct? Well, there's only a small space left. Rachel, it's what, 500 square feet? Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's a separate entity. And it, I, I, it, it's not I certainly only. think it's consistent with the character of the neighborhood. We have a lot of actually higher density no, multifamily units in that section, and I really think that it's compatible with, with what's there currently, and um, that would be my personal opinion on that. I'm starting to lose you. I can't hear you, Wayne. I'm sorry. Um, I'm, I'm saying that it was done right in 2014, 15. Correct. The job was done right. Wayne, can you pull the mic closer? We can't hear you, man. I think it's a good, is that better? Yeah. It's, it's yeah. muffled again, Tim. He went back, I think, to try and, he went back to try and boost the sound. Okay. Oh, now now we can hear you. Feedback. Would it be, maybe I'll turn mine off. How's that? I think it's certainly, maybe I'll speak louder. Uh, is that better? No. no. Um, I'm saying good things there. I think I think that uh, um, I have no problem with this application. And I, I think it's a good use, and uh, it should be approved there. Okay. The the I'm I'm going specifically. I was hoping for a little bit more addressing criterion five, which is the unnecessary hardship. And I'm gonna read it just to make it clear. Yeah. Owing to the special conditions of the property that distinguish mm -hmm. it from other properties in the area, Application. denial of the variance would result in unnecessary hardship because there's no fair and substantial relationship that exists between the general public's purpose of the ordinance provisions 
and the specific application of that provision to the <coughs> property. If, if you could just take a little time to say, explain what makes this unique and, and not, I mean, I know the economy is bad all over the place, but what is it that's specific about this property that, that makes this the right, app, the, the right use for it? So I, th I think I heard most of that. I apologize. Some of it was muffled. Um, what makes it a, a suitable use is, I think, going back to what Diane said, that I'm, I'm sitting amongst other buildings that are basically doing the same thing in a, in a mixed-use zone. We're just trying to make the building viable for the future. Um, again, it doesn't mean that we might change it the next day or a year from now, but we want to know that we, we can, and it, and it is a better use for the building. I mean, I think, I think as I said in criteria number five, which is the one you're looking for me to address, um, the zoning ordinance as applied to this particular property, and actually all of the properties that have already been granted this use by just the three I went through, there's many others. I just chose three that were literally concentric around my building. It interferes with the reasonable use of the property. These were all residences before, as we know, they changed it when uh, Lynn and John uh, purchased it. It, it, it's, it's, it lends itself very nicely to the use that we're looking for. Um, and considering the environment we're in, the neighborhood we're in, um, where the property exists, the, the variance doesn't hinder anyone in my neighborhood. It, it doesn't injure the, the public. It doesn't injure my, my neighbor's values. If anything, uh, what we've done to the building, and I, when I say we, I'm going to say the Perkins and the Eames, um, we have brought that building so that it's not an eyesore anymore. It was an eyesore. Um, so we've more than helped the neighborhood uh, when, when you, know, you look at market value or whatever. Um, it's, it's justified that the hardship is that I'm, I'm sitting around doing this. I actually have more land per unit than what others have, and we're just looking to um, proceed with what we feel is a very reasonable request for the use of the building. So I agree with 100% with you that it's a very good proposal. It's just that the, with the nature of the criteria, we've got to develop it in a, in a manner that, that addresses the unique aspects of the property that, that are causing the hardship. And it sounds to me like what you're saying is that you're nestled in, a, in an area where you've got m numerous multifamily homes around you, and um, you're looking to address, get basically parity compared to them. Well, not really. I mean, I, I guess you could say that, but I, I mean, quite frankly, I'm, I'm really not looking to do because my neighbors have. I'm looking to do what makes most sense for this building. Uh, and yes, the neighborhood, I am surrounded, surrounded by properties in the same zone that have uh, considerably more units. I mean, if I look at the one, quite frankly, right next door um, with six units on 0.48 of an acre, um, my request is extremely reasonable if I look at that as comparison. But I don't begrudge that they have six units in that building right next to that building looking very nice as well. As a matter of fact, that building was sold about a year and a half ago. Um, and we have a nice relationship between the two of us. But, but my point is, this doesn't, this doesn't uh, the, the, the request to change this use uh, does no harm to the greater good and in my opinion, actually does considerably aids the town by being able to do this. This would be a lovely, it is a lovely building. Um, I'm not asking for anything that is um, not warranted by what's there. Does I, it? I have one more comment. Go ahead, Al. I'm a bit intrigued by your earlier comment. Um, and again, I'm new with this. So Take it for what it's worth. But your comment about three use, two residential uses and an office. Correct. Does that open the door to similar considerations? Is that something the ZBA should be concerned about? My understanding is that precedent doesn't play that Sorry. much of a role in there. 
it, it's certainly got a, a minor element, but um, that's what we've got to consider. That's what the zoning ordinance does. It establishes a, a, a common basis for similar areas like that. So what the precedent to be set here is that you could have uh, you know, an apartment building next door that's got four units in it. They could carve out a little niche in it and say that's an office space and you know, we've opened up uh, Pandora's box. This is you know, a very, very good uh, use of the space, I think, and, and I'm not begrudging that. It's just I've got to make sure that we're, we're looking specifically at the unique aspects of the, the property that make that the best. And basically what I'm understanding to some extent is that the, the size of the space, they don't need all that space to do it. So it's basically underutilized and they're looking to make the space, utilize the space more efficiently and, and better given that given that building. Right. So I, I think it's a great idea and a great concept. Um, and I'm not averse to it, but I'm, I'm looking to better develop the hardship side of things. And I think we've danced around it, and I think we're all in agreement that it's a good good use of the property. Uh, with that being said, I, Wayne? I, I don't think we're, we're setting a precedent, if that's what your question is. I, I don't think we're doing a, a bad thing by uh, approving something like this. No, it's, is that what your question is? Yeah, again, I'm new, so it's, yeah. it's probably a naive question. And we, question. We, 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 Bob and I have both been on this board for 10 years, and we really <coughs> do, I think you'll agree with me, we take each individual uh, case, case by case, so um, I, I don't think we have a problem there. And again, the key to working on this is to focus on the unique aspects of the, the property that, that make this the right choice for that property. And I, you know, I think we've all danced around it. I, I think it's a good use for the property. So I would agree. I, I'll entertain a, a motion from, did Steve blank out on us or just shut his camera off? Oh, excuse me. Mr. Daigle, can I make a comment? Yes. One of the things that strikes me personally as being unique about this piece of property is it is already it meets the town's site review regulations for a mixed use development. It is a fully designed and engineered site. There's a parking lot that meets the town's regulations. There's a stormwater system that meets the town's regulations. And this conversion of use was easy because the facilities and the amenities are already there. And many of the other sites in that neighborhood do not have developed parking areas. And we have residents who in the past have sort of shoehorned in, if you will, parking spaces that don't actually work that well in some instances. <laughs> so to me as a planner, the uniqueness of this track is that it is a ready-made track that's designed and meets the town's regulations. And because of that, to not allow it to be used for a reasonable mixed use development would be a hardship, a physical hardship, due to the physical there. design features of the site. Thank you, Diane. I do, I applaud the developer for doing a great job in the past. And I guess that will be my comment on this. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Di Diane, for stating what I was trying to get at. You did it's a nice job, Diane. One. Thank you. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Is there anyone else that's Sorry. got any comments? With that, uh, one, one thing, piece of business I forgot to do right at the beginning. Um, I'm appointing uh, Al Zink as the alternate to sit on the board and ask Sorry about that. Uh, I'll, ex I'll uh, entertain a motion on the wing. I'd like to make a motion to approve the Eames Family Revocable Trust application, a variance for section 3286, residential density 3247 M3 
zone and 3256 table of permitted uses of the zoning new market zoning ordinance I have a motion on the floor do I have a second second Uh, all those in favor, we've got to do a roll call on that. Uh, Al? Aye. Wayne? Aye. James? Aye. Steve? Aye. And I'll vote aye. So the ayes have it. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your patience. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Diane. Okay, with that being said, we go to the second item on the agenda for tonight, which is um, a request by Jason and Sarah Mansfield. There, uh, um, I got the wrong, wrong sheet. Hang on. My computer went to sleep on me. There will be a continuation of the public hearing for an application for variance <coughs> reference section 32-87 setbacks and 32-89 dimensions table of the new market zoning ordinance requested by Jason and Sarah Mansfield to permit the construction of a single car garage five feet from the side property line abutting 30 Lady Slipper Drive where 10 feet is required and five feet from the rear property line abutting Sewell Farm open space lift station where 30 feet is required. The property is located at 32 Lady Slipper Drive, tax map four, uh, R4, lot 36, R2 zone. Okay, uh, who, who have we got speaking to this? Is the is Mr. Hello. The man, yeah, this, are the Mansfield, hi. there they are. Yes, hello everyone, Mansfield. I trust you can hear me okay? Yes, we can. Terrific, okay. Um, so what I'd like to do real quickly, because the last time that we initially met was on September 28th, and then we met the following week where we had technical trouble and we couldn't hear each other. Um, so at the last meeting that I attended, um, the board request requested to get some more photos and information to sort of better describe the situation. So I have that up on the screen. I don't know if you can see that, but I have some slides I can I can roll through uh, because there when I when I submitted this information last I think it was before last week's or the previous meeting, which was two weeks ago, um, I had I added some new information and some new consideration that I think would have a less uh, less significant impact. I believe at the last meeting I attended, I believe one of the board members, I think it was Jim, um, who had asked, and here's the original proposal. I was looking to put a, uh, a garage in the back corner of my, my lot. And um, there were some initial questions why it wasn't closer to the streets. And initially, I didn't consider that as strongly because I thought there'd be more impacts with the 30 foot offset over here and other things. But after, we had that initial meeting, I gave that some more thought. And act, what Jim had mentioned was actually a pretty good idea. Um, so, and I'll just skip ahead to the this current slide <clears throat> because at the last meeting, last meeting I attended, uh, everyone wanted to see a better idea of what, what, what we were proposing. So right here is just simply a, a, a Google Maps slide that shows the, uh, shows the property um, as it stands right now. Um, with some with some markers there for information, existing shed back here, uh, currently about 54 feet from the back of the deck, existing deck to the property line, and about 27 feet from this fire hydrant, which we'll discuss in a few moments. Um, this slide also shows the current uh, 30 foot offsets that I'm required to have. Um, uh, for the back property, 30 feet, and also adjacent to the side over here is 30 foot offset. So the revised proposal would be to um, move move the the garage um, um, away from my original proposal, where the existing shed is, and actually move it uh, closer to the Lady Slipper Drive Street here. 
And the biggest impact to that change would be um, the only really offset I'm looking to gather would be off this lift station property. I'm no longer affected the 30 Lady Slipper property. I'm no longer affecting the open space. And so I'm, I'm just affecting the uh, Sewell Farms uh, property there. So I felt that would be a reasonable request. It has less impact than the original proposal overall. Okay. And as, as, as requested before, you may have this information in front of you, but I just wanted to sort of share some uh, photos of the existing house and garage. One of the main questions that I, I, I expected to have to discuss is why not just uh, add uh, uh, another single car garage onto this onto this uh, side of the house here. And first off, that's certainly not impossible to do. Um, there's, there, there's, there is, I we would have to encroach on the 30, 30 foot offset, probably to maybe a two to three feet um, because building it out like an equal size garage would encroach upon that. So there would be a variance required. Um, and this is where it would go basically um, the, uh, the water the water main line that feeds the house is it goes right along this range right here I don't think there'll be any impact to that the the, the big you know the big issue and you can consider it a possible hardship maybe 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 a partial hardship is the the enormity of cost to build uh, tie in another garage and build a wider driveway on this side of the property um, it's in compared in comparison to what I'm, I'm proposing to do um, a project like this, according to my my contractor, um, would be maybe three or four times the cost than, uh, than than the current proposal. Large amount of money will have to be spent to uh, expand the driveway, uh, bring up the elevation and grades and match the existing um, uh, elevation, and then all the landscaping removal requirements, the fill, and then tie it into the existing house. So that's where, where, where I sort of, why I started um, considering this as an option back here, um, simply because I prefer to put it attached to the house, but however, I think that's the, the, the cost that would require, I would probably never get that back in terms of home value. Okay, so here's some more photos that you may have. Um, here's a photo of the existing property pen that's <coughs> behind the house. Um, and here's, here's sort of a rough estimate of where the property line is. Here's the lift station building. And this is the property line here. And there's some trees here. And this is the view in the opposite direction. And this sort of, I just simulated with one of my vehicles by parking in approximate vicinity of where the lead-in of the one car garage. Um, just for point of reference, the front wheels are probably in line with that 30 foot offset. That, um, so this is, this is the actual uh, close-up of the proposal or rough, rough sketches. Again, um, the idea would be to request a five foot variance, a five foot offset, um, for the lift station, uh, property. Um, and this line represents here, the existing offset. We would not impact that existing offset there. Um, and then as, 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 you know, as, as we get into the criteria, criterions and such, you know, I think the topic of this existing fire hydrant, which, which was, which is on the property currently, will, will, will come into discussion. Obviously, um, if I tried to push or build a garage that was within that offset, um, it, it, it would certainly interfere with the, the line of sight or the path of the existing fire hydrant. Um, so that's sort of where the, the five foot uh, request came from uh, as, as a sensible solution to keep, keep the garage you know, far enough away from that existing fire hydrant. Um, so since then, um, you know, I, as, as, as mentioned, I think um, by Diane and some board members that I needed to talk with Rick Malaski um, and ask some specific questions and what his opinion um, of the, of the issue of, because his, 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 his input is gonna have obviously significant value uh, to the decision of the zoning board. Um, so he initially did a drive-by a few weeks ago and he had the same questions, you know, that I think a lot of you may have. Um, and then I asked, I asked, I went back to Rick and he, I asked him very specific pointed questions about the fire hydrant here. Um, 
and so he he actually stopped stopped over uh, this morning actually um he was he was coming to work he said i'll come over and we'll have a chat and um so his basic recommendation initially he says you know he's concerned about the location of the fire hydrant um you know approximately to where the i guess the the driveway or the entrance points to the to the garage would be um he would have some concern and he would like to see that um relocated if, if possible um which you know I, I started asking questions and i'm not opposed to you know incurring some cost for that um to to do that correctly but he also brought up some interesting points about this fire hydrant specifically um, he was very shocked to see that this fire hydrant was installed with this much pipe sticking out of the ground um he says you know that 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 was not done correctly um it, that should be flush with the ground the event it's it's you know it, it should be designed that way obviously if something ever hit it the top part is meant to break away there's really no other way to shut off unless you go go to the i guess the way i have you have to go to the shut off anyway but that that was a that was a concern with him um and he felt that that should be corrected um so and, and so that's just a general summary i have from my my, my meeting with the, the fire chief um you know he, he basically said I, I, you know, I, that I have concerns about the fire hydrant. Um, I think it should be re relocated. But as he saw this, he's like, this is this is not installed correctly. And um, he also feels it should be closer to the roadside as opposed to the property. Um, so that's sort of the, the general summary of information that I wanted to share with you um, during the previous meeting that we had technical trouble. Um, does anyone have any specific questions about these these photos or if they'd like me to go back to, to review something, I'd be happy to do that now. Did, did Rick have any specific recommendations? Did he say that, you know, that you, he was going to require you to uh, relocate it or for a driveway he, permit? He didn't use the, uh, the word require, but he says well, he, he said, you know, I, I, he felt his opinion, which I value, is that it should be moved maybe uh, maybe six to ten feet in the northern direction um, the, uh, of where the driveway, just to, just to further you know, mitigate the risk of, you know, something coming in contact with it. it in, in, in really where it is now, I, I think it's a low risk, but um, I think in order to, to satisfy the 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 standards that the, the fire chief says, I mean, I'm not necessarily opposed to have it relocated at some cost of my own. I don't know what that cost is, um, but it, it it sounds like it, it needs to be corrected in terms of the height regardless. Um, so that that's something that I think, you know, maybe for, for a continuing discussion, we'll have to sort of hammer that out a little in a little more detail. Um, but, you know, he, he did say, he, he didn't show up and say, yeah, it's fine where it is, don't worry about it. He said, no, I'm concerned about it. And so I, I, took, I took some value to that, and then I think it should be relocated um, in order to, again, mitigate the potential risk. Okay. Uh, as a matter of course, before we really start discussing this, I'm going to open the uh, meeting up to the public. If there's anybody out there that wants to speak to this, let us know, raise your hand, do whatever you've got to do to be heard. Is there anybody out there? It doesn't seem to be. Uh, with that, the public session, unless somebody pops up, in which case we'll get them, we'll give them their chance to speak. But uh, I'll open it up to the board to uh, discuss it. Uh, does anybody have it? Go ahead, go ahead, Wayne. I may have missed it because I, I have I'm having trouble hearing you, um, but did uh, Mala did Rick Rick say that he would approve a driveway in that location? He didn't say. Uh, he basically he didn't say anything yes or no about a driveway. He basically left it up to the zoning board. It's my understanding to make that decision. Well, but that's I, he didn't, not he, he didn't. Mr. Chairman, may I bring some light to this? If I can we get can we get that volume up? Hang on, Diane. I, We're going to turn your I volume. had conversations with Rick. 
Can you hear me now? He's going to turn your volume up just a whisper, okay? Thank you. Oh, got it. Rick has jurisdictions regarding this. Number one, he is the public works director. And as the public works director, he approves all driveway access permits for the town. So if there is a hydrant in the way of a driveway and Rick feels that it's an encumbrance and should be moved, Rick has the authority. Yeah, I, 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 Diane, can you get a little closer to your microphone? Yes. Can you hear me better now? A little better. Okay. So Rick, as the public works director, has jurisdiction over driveway permits. And if a way of a uh, driveway that is being proposed, he has full authority to require that the hydrant be moved. In addition to that, Rick is our fire chief. And as you all know, the fire chief has full authority to request that a hydrant be relocated as part of a town function. And I think um, I did get a hear back from Rick and he was very clear with me and I haven't received any follow up correspondence, but he was very clear to me that it had to be moved. Now, if there's some kind of an arrangement that Mr. Mansfield can work out with him, maybe some sharing of costs, um, that really, I think, is up to the Rick and uh, Mr. Mansfield to work out. And I don't think it really, unless this board, you know, feels that it's a major issue, I, I feel confident that it can be worked out. But I just want to make sure it's clear that the fire chief has quite a bit of authority under the RSAs for life safety. <coughs> Bob, you're a volunteer fireman. I'm sure you can oh, attest yeah. to that. Um, Go ahead, Wayne. I I understand that. My question is more is more. Are you going to take take the hydrant right out of it? Are you? Do you it's think? Do you think you'll get a driveway permit? I mean, this is kind of a moot discussion if you can't get a driveway permit. Right. I think the intent was that if he agreed that he would, we would move the fire hydrant, then, then he would grant uh, a driveway permit. But I didn't know enough about the situation to ask that specific question when I saw him. But I don't, I don't see why he would even have a discussion with me but yeah, about potential cost impact and how it would be done, and even the consideration of of, of the uh, incorrect installation of the fire hydrant that didn't meet a standard. Um, but yes, I would I would I would have to go back and ask a very specific point question that if we relocate this fire hydrant, um, will the will a driveway permit be granted? And I. And that. Okay. My last discussion with Rick and I have an email I can send it, was what he said to me, that the okay. has to be moved for the driveway permit. And he also has that authority as the fire chief. So are you saying he would grant the permit? No. If, it's if, if, if the hydrant was moved. Right. Well, I don't know. He hasn't uh, filed the, an application for the, the permit. The, There's other right. considerations. The too. town ordinance is... is the town standards are fairly clear. It's one driveway per lot. Yeah, but it's it's more than that, Bob. You have to look at the site distance. You have to oh, look yeah. at the bridge. Yeah. There's a whole array of specifications that come into play. It's not just it's not just you know. There's a number of things. So, and we don't know. We haven't. He hasn't filed the permit, and Rick hasn't said that yes, he would approve it if the hydrant was relocated. I think. Maybe we need to get more cl if clarification from Rick. I tried to put Mr. Mansfield in touch with Rick so Rick could help clarify this for us before the meeting tonight, and I didn't hear back from him. So, well, but he, you know, he, he he did he did come to my property this morning, and and, and we, we reviewed the situation, and he said yes. I he was he was very strong about yes. The, I believe the fire hydrant should be relocated to a a a a, a different. A safer location. Now we, think in terms of exact yeah. location and feet, oh yeah, distance. Yeah. And then who's going to pay for it? That's an expensive proposition, from what I understand. I yeah, think. he said that it would not require any. Um, you wouldn't have to tear up the street. It would only be the dirt on my or, or the, the, the location on my property that would have to be 
cut into. Um, but yeah, there, there would be some cost. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm not opposed to sharing some of this cost um, with the town if, 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 if this whole proposal is approved. Um, but I do think the existing um, issue um, will also be, have to be addressed if we do something. And that would be the responsibility of the town, that the fact that it was installed incorrectly. I think we need to get a letter from Rick Malosky to clarify it. Well, it might be. I, 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 I'm not sure that the driveway permit and relocation of the hydrant is, is um, I mean, that's all going to come afterwards. I, I wouldn't break any ground for a building until I had both in hand. But, um, you know, our, our, what we're looking at doesn't necessarily hinge on the on the driveway permit is this a is this a good use of the lot necessary to achieve his ends uh, what's unique about the lot that requires this to be done I think he's addressed those at a number of levels uh, he's got listed an economic impact he has listed the fact that uh, you know it would be he'd have to put a lot of fill in order to get it so it's consistent with the rest of the household uh, the roof lines don't match, so you can't just tie it off the uh, the existing household. So, uh, does it make sense to put the the, the uh, garage there? In a lot of ways, it does. Uh, what do the others think? James Dean, you got any comments? Yeah, I, I just wanted to make sure that the discussion of the driveway. It's kind of and it's going to sound harsh at the moment, but it's kind of like moot at the moment, right? Like there's there's no impact of what we're what we're doing right now. Correct. Is that correct? That, that's the way I that's the way I that's the way I look at our our role in this is that there are other regulators that have authority over that, and if we grant them the relief they're asking, they're going to have to go through that permit process to get that addressed, and and that's at their risk. Okay, so, yeah, I, I have no with other, that, Diane? I have no question. Say it again? Am I correct with that, Diane? Oh. I would say so, sir, yes. But he still has to address the issue one correct. way or the other. So yeah. is, the best, is the best approach to this issue is actually to file a permit? Or should it be a, 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 uh, an email or letter from Rick saying that well, based on what I've seen, it should move to this location um, and we should address the issue with the with the standpipe being too high out of the ground at that time um, if those if that if those criteria are met then he would approve a permit is that or, or is it better to go for the permit and, and have that discussion for the application you're in a catch-22 right now is what it is <laughs> if I were Rick looking at this and you came to me and said I want a driveway permit and you haven't got a variance to allow to put a building there then I just say, <laughs> I'm not dealing with this. I, I, there's no no point in it. You can't put a building there. So we've right. got to we've got to either. But grant, you could put in a driveway without a um, you could, building. You can just to put yeah, a guess, driveway in. Could, yeah. So he well, already has a driveway. You yeah. get a, no, a second driveway. driveway he, 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 and again, I, there's I, a question I, on that too: whether you can have two driveways. Well, that Rick raised. Well, that's not our. No, it right. isn't. I agree, I agree with that. However, I'm just looking at. It would be negligent on this board's part to to not point out the fact that he could potentially have a problem getting a second driveway. There. Correct. That's all I'm saying. And that's why I think in order to push this the, the to the to, to where he's going to be at, he's going to have permission to encroach into the. Um, offset and and to build a building then he's got to go through the process of getting a building permit and getting a driveway and the fire hydrant and everything else is going to be addressed at that point and then he's going to have to make a decision whether it's ec economically viable that's right that's right so can i ask a quick question then absolutely uh so if that's the case then so i i uh, diane you might have to answer this uh is there a way that we can table 
until that is figured out or is that i mean i don't want it to be a grant i don't i don't want there to be a vote of yes we approve or disapprove because that that doesn't i don't i don't think that's fair um it could be a conditional approval subject to him okay getting a highway access permit that meets the requirements of the public works director okay I don't have a problem ap approving or, or acting upon the uh, the garage location without the driveway permit. My my sole purpose is, is just to you're going through this whole process, and I think you should get a driveway permit before you and you know you have access to that building that you want to build. That's my whole point in this. I don't have a problem with granting you one and then you going after it afterwards I, I i wouldn't do it that way i guess that's i'd get my driveway permit and make sure i have access before i and i agree i wouldn't well, move a shovel and dirt you would you would probably still have to you would probably still have to come before us because i believe the driveway would be in the um, side offset anyway yeah but the right right but the board could act on the application tonight with the condition. Yeah, we can act on it. Okay. Yeah, uh, I don't have a problem with that. I just, okay. maybe I'm opening my mouth and I shouldn't be, but. No, you're absolutely right. There are options available, but we've got a, we've got a, uh, a situation before us where he's asking for a yeah. variance to put that in. He's not asking for a variance. He may be putting the cart before the horse. Rick may tell him that it ain't happening. So can I throw a motion for the condition? Uh, so I move to conditionally approve this application with the, uh, Dan, help me out with the wording. With So with the- Approve the, appli the application for a First of all, make a finding that it meets the criteria for a variance and approve the Variance subject to the public works d director issuing a driveway permit for the proposal and shown on the plan yeah. by Mr. Uh, Man. Yeah, so I do that. I, I want I want that as a motion. <laughs> <laughs> what, so when Sue's taking notes, yeah, what what Diane just said. <laughs> work with the language so, so you're you're it right basically for everybody out there he's making a, a a motion that says it meets the criteria for the variance and that he's making a motion to approve the variance with the condition that he get the necessary permits from public works and that if it doesn't if it doesn't come through that way then the uh, the variance is moot Is the fire Correct. hydrant, should the fire hydrant be part of that? It's all going to be part of that when, when it gets to Rick. And it could be that they reach some kind of a, a settlement and a cost arrangement, no, that whatever is. that may be. Yeah, and, that, and that's all part of that conditional, right? right. Yeah, okay. But it's, it's up to Rick to issue that permit and be happy with the location and how it is resolved. Right. That's his jurisdiction. Yep. All right, I have a motion on the floor. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, Al seconds. Uh, we'll go down through Al. Aye. Wayne. Aye. Steve. Aye. James. Aye. And I'll vote aye also. So all you Was that an aye, Steve? I didn't hear you. Was that an aye? No, it was an um, but I'll vote an aye too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so we jumped ahead. Sorry, Steve. All right. That's all right. Thank you. Okay, right. thank you, everyone. Very good. So, uh, Jason, do you have uh, that you need to have in order to proceed then? Like, do you know what your next steps are? Um, not exactly. <laughs> 
Okay, who, uh, Dan, who would be the best person that you yeah. can work with? What we will do, Jason, is we will send you a notice of decision from the board indicating the variance has been granted subject to the condition. We will make sure that Mr. Malosky gets a copy of that letter and you then it would be up to you and he to, to work that okay. up, um, knowing okay. to go forward with the driveway in the setback until such time as you have your highway access permit worked out. Okay. 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 okay thank you. That makes sense. You're welcome. All right. I might reach out to you for questions, but I appreciate all your help. And, and we'll good, try our best. <laughs> good, good luck. Thank yes, you. Yes, good luck, Jason. I, I don't okay. think we made your good life luck. any easier. I just well, Jason did an excellent job on his application. I wanted to mention that. I thought it was very well presented, good pictures, photographs, plot plans. I want everybody to put together a plan so easy to understand. Thank you. Well, as the oh. great Bilbo Baggins said, third time pays for all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Sounds good. Okay, great. All right. Thank you, everyone. I'm going to leave now. All right. Take good care, night. Jason. Great night. Thank you. couple of things. Uh, Sue asked me to try and get some input on the um, the October 5th meeting where we had all the audio problems. Uh, basically, it's it's who made the motion to continue and who seconded it. I think I moved it. I'm almost positive. That's what I thought, too. That's the way I, I'd written it up on my end of things. And I thought Steve had seconded the motion. But I'm not I believe that's correct. That. Yes, and and basically the way I'm going to write it up for Sue is that there was really no business that could be transacted because we couldn't get on the same audio audio level, so yeah. we really didn't get anything out of it. Uh, yeah, there's really nothing worthwhile in actual content. Yeah, there was no substantive discussion about the applications that 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 I remember. There was a lot of. Can you hear me now? Yeah. I think the only thing I got out of that whole meeting was the size of the uh, the building on uh, at Morelli at, uh, at Eames property, mm -hmm. the the 110 square feet and the 1100. That's all I remember. <laughs> and I was having trouble getting myself oriented because <coughs> you're 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 muted, Diane. All right. Uh, I was just going to say, I couldn't hear anything. There was this shrill vo noise and feedback, and it was really annoying and confusing. Well, it's funny. I went back to, on the New Market Facebook page, I went back to see what were they talking about online. And I went back and was like, oh, yeah, that does sound terrible. Okay. <laughs> it was All funny because right. Stephen asked me, well, who made the motion and who made the, I don't know. Because I, it went completely by me, and it wasn't until Steve called me and said, "Oh, well, by the way, they discontinued it." I had no idea. So thank you, Steve, for following up on that. We appreciate You're welcome. That. So, with that being said, we've conducted the business we can conduct tonight. So let's uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Al, we have a motion on the floor. Adjourn, yes, no, yes. yes, Wayne? Aye. Steve? Aye. James? E, yes, aye. Yes and aye, so it's unanimous. Okay. Good night, everyone. <laughs>